Got your bath, so very shiny. Look at that, all your hay. You so shiny. So, I got home. We got a new rug because Zoe keeps peeing and pooping on this rug. She's a chihuahua. And I even asked, What are you doing, Evelyn? I even asked the animal communicator, I'm like, Why she does that? She goes, Why not? She's a biatch. So anyway, my husband ordered this rug, right? <laughs> I sent him the size to order, and this was not the size to order. Yeah, this is what, it was in the link. It was in the link. No, it wasn't. This is the size that popped up. This is the most massive rug I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. So we're going to have to figure this one out for sure. Oh, my God. This is a test of marriage right here. No, I mean, I'm just saying the crease is okay. All right, so I say then we pull it back so we can like straighten it out as best as possible, right? You with me? Because then that's, we'll get the one couch over. I was thinking like all the way. The problem is this crease right here, this is where it was like originally folded. Okay, <laughs> that's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna go back to the crease. <laughs> Oh, you're recording. Yes! Lift it up a little higher, muscles. Oh, shut up. There it goes. Uh-oh. I guess we don't even necessarily have to have them fully connected if they're sitting on a full rug. Mm -hmm. See? Just slid right in. That's what she said. Huh? That's what she said. She didn't. Okay, can I just say, had I bought no. this? No. Had I bought no. this myself, you would have been so fucking pissed. Never. I don't get angry. All right. We're not Excuse me, Bubba. You still have to move. 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 So you move, bitch. One of my students got me this blanket. Yeah. It's amazing. Come on. Come on, off the new rug. Kaylee, if you're watching, I know you're watching. I love it. <laughs> I know you're watching. <laughs> she does. Yes, I hope, I hope. It's amazing, I still love it. I put it on my couch. And here it is. Wow, that really brightens up the room, doesn't it? Designers like literally so tired. My hands are like destroyed after this weekend. I think I'm gonna scratch. I think I'm gonna scratch tens first level three test today. Because for one, I don't think my back will handle it. Too. I don't really for I don't really see the need to. I mean, he he went out 
there yesterday. He didn't look at anything. He didn't spook at anything. He was fantastic. He listened to everything I asked. Um, any missteps or anything like that that we had were completely my fault because I have a hard time helping hold him together um, because of my back when he kind of curls up or like hollows his back out. And uh, there's really no other way I can describe it other than like sitting on a jackhammer. <laughs> like that's, that's the only way I can describe it because there's no other word that seems fitting. He's a tough one, man. Just a tough one. So I think I'm going to scratch his last test. I'm so exhausted. I'm so tired. I got home last night. Obviously, we put the rug down and I could not sleep last night. I think it's because I've been eating so bad. My restless legs were out of control. Oh my God. So bad. So I'm going to try and get through this third level three test without a reader. I think I have everything through and practiced that test before because I don't, I don't have a reader today. So it doesn't, it doesn't, um, I'm gonna have to do it anyway, alone. So, there we go. No reader forces you to memorize your damn tests. <laughs> See, the downside is, the reason why I'm so proud of myself, oh, I am so proud of myself that I went, got through three tests yesterday without a reader at all. Um, and the reason why I'm so happy and so proud of myself for it is because I would religiously like, mess up dressage tests and I had a reader every single time like religiously mess up dressage tests the fact that I remembered not one not two but three and some of them move like in my second level test yesterday um I definitely did not get back to like the counter canter on the left going from H to B and then you show the counter can counter canter from B to P. That one I totally like went to P <laughs> and did not show the counter canter. So stuff like that. Like I mean, yeah, I did, but like I just I was trying so hard to hold that lead for him. Okay. We're on our way. We're almost there. See my phone died yesterday and I couldn't film. That's why I couldn't film anything. I was gonna film like giving a bath and what I used to bathe them. Mm. My phone died. You ending your hay? Huh? You ending there? What? I put it over there. And now, why are you dragging your hay all around your stall? Eh, like a budget. What is that? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you did a goofball. are looking so handsome. You're even getting dapples. They're hard to see, but you're getting them. You're getting dapples because you're so handsome. Is it too early? Oh, look at how fucked up my hands are. Look how swollen my knuckles are. <laughs> What are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you videotaped me. Well, you told me to. I said in a little bit. Oh. I said, I said, let my phone. Good boy.
Okay, so obviously this is my warm-up on Zeke. Um, I am just working on basically getting him supple, getting him off the forehand, get him li getting him listening to my aids and my seat, and just trying to get him to not pull because he likes to be very heavy on the forehand and really hang on your hands and your upper body and not actually use his hind end. Um, and he does not like picking up his left lead that much <laughs> so he usually tries to pick up the right one first so i have to be a little bit over exaggerated about the left lead cue um but when i'm warming him up i typically try to do lots of stretching lots of picking him up putting him back down lots of transitions really just trying to work on getting him loose it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to actually warm him up um, he comes out usually pretty stiff uh, he is 17 years old um, and 18 hands so he is a big fella and that is a lot of horse to move around and a lot of horse to try to put together and a lot of horse to um, really in general just ride <laughs> so um, I do, like I said, a lot of transitions and really just trying to get him off of the reins and off of my hands and using his body, using his hind end. And he tries to use his neck more than his hind um, while going into the left lead canter because that right hind is um, his weaker one. If you've listened to any of my videos I say that all the time because it's true and you can actually see like when you get the shot of his butt like just how sloped that that hip is and that muscle atrophy on that right side so he has a he has a lot harder time with anything left and lateral movements are very tough for him too but I am taking it very slow with him I don't rush it it takes gosh, a year or two years to, to build up proper self-carriage. And if you've done it shorter than that, then you've done it wrong. <laughs> Some horses are more athletic than others, but it takes a long time to build up proper self-carriage. So this process takes quite a bit. And now that he's sound and he um, is able to do a lot of this conditioning work, we can finally start um, really working on that. So this is our first test of the day. It's third three, I think it is. And we got a, um, I'm not going to read off the scores like the last time because I couldn't see what was going on. I couldn't multitask. Um, we got a 63.25 on this test. Our halt was okay. It wasn't great. Um, I personally have a harder time writing him than a more experienced professional would because obviously that professional is more experienced but like when Debbie rides him or when somebody would ride him that's significantly better than me it looks a lot better because they can keep him together more because they have more of the core strength and they have more of the finesse which I just don't quite have yet and that takes years to develop too so I mean for me I got this horse to learn on and I don't make him look that great and I'm fine with it. Like I'm learning. It's, it's a process. I've gotten a lot better since I've gotten him and he's gotten a lot better. Um, he has had a tough journey and I am providing everything that I possibly can to, to get him back up to where he needs to be. So, um, I thought our test this day went a lot better than um, Saturday. So this is Sunday. And I thought they went a lot better. He felt, excuse me, a lot better. Ugh. Like immensely better this day. And I thought our lateral movements were a little bit more fluid. He was a little bit more forward. Um, that halt and rain back just was honestly my fault and not setting him up properly um, to get him you know, to halt right there at A. We were a little bit behind. I didn't have him forward enough. Um, I'm still not quite comfortable. I'm not, I don't want to say chasing him, but pushing him more forward because 
he would take off. Um, he is a very sensitive horse, so I try to be extremely sensitive as much as I can with my aids, which sometimes ends up in either like the movement not happening or not happening properly. But I have found in the past that, I mean, for a while I didn't use spurs on him at all because he would jump forward so much, which, you know, a good thing if you only have to lightly use them. But then if I didn't have them, then he wouldn't go at all. So it's been a process of trying to, I don't want to say dull him down to the aids, but get him less offended by them if that makes sense um so he's just he's he's a big horse he's a little uncoordinated and with the right muscle atrophy it just it's it's so much harder for him to do to do everything and it's so much harder too just because of his sheer size he's just a massive horse he's thick around he's tall he's long He's just, he's a big old guy. So, um, I don't think this day we got any of our lead changes, which again, my fault, also his weaknesses. Um, I haven't really truthfully been able to whew, practice many of these dressage tests. So like, this was like kind of practicing for me because at our new barn, we don't have like a full size dressage arena. And even back at the other one, it was winter since I had gotten him. So obviously I got him to teach me, but I've had so many issues with his feet just from lack of care previously before me. He is barefoot now um, and he's moving a lot better. However, he's still a little like no with his feet. So I actually have the vet coming out on or not the vet, the farrier coming out Tuesday to put him in the polyflex shoes, but we're going to have to put a wedge on that, on that right front, because I'm just not really enjoying how he's standing with it, which is no different than how he used to. And the fact that he is sound is just a huge breath of fresh air. But, um, we took the shoes off to let his feet breathe and kind of move how they wanted to move before we put the polyflex on. And then we kind of left him a little bit longer because he was sound, but I don't want to leave him barefoot any longer without having a little bit of correction with the angles of that, of that right front. Cause it's kind of pancaking out a little bit. Um, our lead changes definitely were not there <laughs> this weekend. And while there were a lot of things that we did worse this day, there were a lot of things that we did better. And overall, I think he just had a much better attitude and he wasn't really looking for things to spook at anymore. Um, he had a couple moments in this test where he spooked, but I think this next test, the third one test, I think he did not spook at all. So that was like a huge milestone <laughs> for him, just not spooking in general, because he is a very, um, he's a very spooky horse. Um, he looks, looks for things to spook at and before people say anything. Yes, he's been treated for ulcers. Some horses just are spooky. I mean, not everything. I'm a big advocate of check your horse for ulcers, but like not everything is ulcer related. I've treated him with 30 days of GastroGuard, so. Um, let's see. So this is third one. Our, he likes to come in down the center line, which is awesome. He comes in pretty bold and, um, that halt wasn't hard. Like we just, we have a lot of things that we need to work on, but I'm just so glad that I was able to get him to this schooling show because this is such a perfect place to, just practice these things and get him used to it. And the footing in here is that GGT footing. So it's really nice footing. Um, it's just, I really love being here out here in arena a, and they do have like open rides and stuff like that, where you can come in and you've got the arena to yourself for a couple hours to practice. So I think I definitely am going to start taking more advantage of those open ride days. Um, until because she is going to put in a dressage arena at the barn I'm at now this summer but it just hasn't been been started yet she started clearing the the spot for it but um you know if I want to continue and get my bronze medal and you know maybe potentially hopefully 
get him in shape enough to start doing fourth level, um, that would be great. But I, as, as of right now, I don't really have any intentions of showing him fourth level uh, until we can get these lateral movements more fluid and get him, you know, using himself more and get his hind end working more and um, really get those changes clean. So uh, the nice thing is I have a lot of hills to work and we have been doing lots and lots of hill work and I have noticed a significant difference. So um, two days out of the week, we're doing like legit, like a ride just on the hills and really working those muscles and getting him moving. And the majority of it is just walking. And then the other two days, um, you know, we're working on what whatever kind of comes up. I don't I don't really typically plan what what I'm going to do and how I'm going to ride. You know, it just kind of depends on how your horse feels that day. If your horse is feeling a little bleh, I'm not going to do a really tough hard ride on him. You know, if he's feeling really great and he's up, then, you know, we'll do something a little bit more difficult. But it's all about being able to determine what your horse needs that day. So that's the end of that rant. But I will say, you know, if any of these top level riders who are used to riding Grand Prix tests and pre St. George tests, I want I2 tests on a regular basis. Like if they were to get on him, he wouldn't look like this. So all the people coming and saying that my horse is lame, he's not lame. I just am a bad rider. <laughs> say, no, I'm not a bad rider. I'm, I'm, a very, I'm a fairly good rider. I just am inexperienced in the upper levels of dressage. So riding at home, because if you go back and look at any of my other videos, he looks a lot better. But riding at home and riding in a dressage test and not having like the moments to do those trainings and redo movements is... I mean, it really, it's tough going in and do it and, and putting out a good dressage test is very difficult. And for the people who have done it and know it, they know, um, the people who haven't or have done it on a horse that is like super easy to ride. They don't, they don't know the struggles of, of what it, what it actually takes to get a horse moving properly. And somebody had commented something about how I shouldn't do dressage with him. It's not the nicest. And I'm like, well, then what, what would I do? Like put more stress on his joints by jumping all the time or making him do barrel. Like, you know, I think dressage itself is the fundamental of disciplines. Getting a horse to move from behind, lift their back, use their abdominal muscles. I mean... I'm, I'm going to continue to do dressage with him. That's what he was purchased for. That's what he was trained to do. We will cross train, yes, but I'm not going to be jumping him a meter 50 just because somebody thinks dressage is abusive and it really is not. Um, but it, everybody has their own opinions. I'm not here to tell somebody their opinions wrong, but if you're going and commenting on somebody's video that they're doing something wrong, I suggest you better have all of your ducks in a row and you be a phenomenal trainer in and of yourself. But realistically, most of those people are not. So anyway, I'm very proud and very happy of, of how how he's come along and how things have progressed with him. He, I have put so much money into this horse at this point. Um, you know, just, I'm, I'm always upfront and honest. I paid $12,000 for him and I have probably put in close to $10,000 in the seven months that I've had him between vet bills, injections, um, Farrier visits, he was getting shot every three to four weeks. Um, muscular, skeletal therapies, PEMF, um, just all kinds of stuff. Go lay down. Go. Sorry, my dog's being annoying. Um, I mean, he at, at least once a month, twice a month, sometimes the chiropractic massage. Um, the only thing I haven't done is, actually, no, I have done acupuncture on him. <laughs> I've done basically everything. So this horse gets the life. So, yep, I'm really proud of him. This was probably our best test of the day. And I was very, very thrilled with how he did. Now, this was the last test of the day. This was our second level test one. I did scratch that first 
three tests. Um, honestly, I probably should have scratched this one and then kept the first three tests, but my first three tests was later in the day. Um, 10 was, I think he was like so excited to get here and like show and whatnot, but then when he realized that there were no jumps, <laughs> I think he was like, what the heck? <laughs> So, because we started jumping again, and he's been really, really, really enjoying it, and we're going to travel down the avenue of eventing. Um, and as you can see here in the second level test in the medium trot, I had to go to posting because I just, I, I can't stay sitting on him through that. So, it's just tough. He just kept coming up and in and up and in, and I think we just, as a team this day, were not working well together um he was not making it easy for me and he was just being very inconsistent in the contact because i couldn't stay centered and sitting because he was just being all like it just was not it was not our day this day and he is just exhausting in general um to ride especially <laughs> trying to sit the trot and he's just he's he's super lazy and there's some days where he feels like so freaking great and then there's other days where he's just like I'm not doing this today and this was one of those days so it was really tough to to one keep him going and I was already using so much leg that I had to tap him quite a few times with the whip to be like come on like let's go like can you can you listen to my leg please like jump up jump forward um, but for him, when he's being in, in one of his, I don't want to say moods, but when he's just being lazy, he doesn't jump forward. He hollows his back and tenses those muscles up around his withers. And that's what then like launches you out of the saddle and makes it really hard to sit. So he's great at faking it. Like this whole test, he didn't feel smooth at all. <laughs> and there's some moments where he looks like he is, but riding tells a whole different story people sometimes are so shocked when they get on and feel how he goes and it's like I know <laughs> I know and he's gotten and the, the sad thing is, is he's gotten tremendously better over the past year so it just um it's been it's been great to see him blossom and I know you know in the next year or so he's gonna progress so much more and we're going to work through a lot of this stuff and I think just cross training in general and maybe the eventing and the cross country will get him a little more forward and a little more bold. But I have made the decision that I am not going to show him anything past first level, um, not because he cannot do it, but because I cannot sit the trot on him. Like I cannot get through a second level test, at least right now, with how out of shape I am that I can't sit the trot and like be effective and be able to use my aids and be able to help him out because he is still green. Um, so that's just a decision because I can't do it. Not because he can't do it, but because I can't do it. Um, I would gladly have a trainer show him in second level, um, you know, but I don't think he would enjoy. He doesn't, he's kind of a one person horse. He doesn't really enjoy having other people ride him. <laughs> And he's not bad or anything. He just, he gets used to a horse. And Renita's kind of the same way. She kind of gets used to one person. And then when other people ride her, she's like, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Zeke really, I mean, he could, he seems to care less. I mean, I think, you know, I think he would be fine packing kids around at Walk Trot. <laughs> but anyway, this was tremendously better than our last show that rated show when we did that second level test I mean we got a 52 on that test and I think the lowest score we got on our second level this weekend was a 62 so I mean significantly better he got all of his leads and he I mean yes he's he's we're struggling a little bit through this test but I mean he's he's eight years old and he had a really really tough tough life on the track so um it's just sad. It's sad, but obviously he's got a good, good life now and he's looking great and he feels great. And this is the soundest he's ever been. Um, and yeah, so 
anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to like and comment if you're going to say something nice. If you're going to say something mean, just move right along. Um, hit that notification bell and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, thank you. I wanna be a weekend lover. Yeah, I'ma be the best damn lover you got. I wanna mess up your covers. I don't wanna meet your mother. Never ever ask me how I've been. Remember why you have my number. I'm the best thing that has ever.